we're good to go and, and we okay. can talk about whatever we want. Welcome to being together with, with Sabelle and James and Sabelle is not here. She won't be here uh, tomorrow either because she is doing uh, a landmark forum thing, which is quite exciting, which is quite exciting okay. for her. But anyway, that's a, that's a big commitment. Uh, I think it's 12 hours each day for three days or, or something like that. So, so anyway, but she asked me to continue <laughs> without her and she'll be with us in spirit. So my guest is uh, Maria Ingren and she's a good friend of mine and we're just gonna, we're just gonna roll with it and, and talk. So we were talking before the, the record button started about morning routines and, and tweaking morning routines and getting things done in the morning. So what, what were you, did you have to say about that? Well, I was saying that I got into a really bad habit when my kids were in high school. They're older now, 21 and, mm -hmm. and 19. Um, but so it's been a while since they've been out of high school. Um, but I would get them off to school, you know, when they were driving and go back to bed to go to sleep. <laughs> and um, I kind of, you know, changed that over the years. But lately, I just can't get myself moving till later. So lately I've been setting the alarm early and getting up and forcing myself to just keep moving. Because if I just move from the bed to the easy chair. Yeah, when, when you're move, when you're moving and, and <laughs> out of the that's bed. That's it. Yeah. So I did dishes this morning, which I, mm. I'm not a big fan. So that was definitely a stretch for me, but I did it. So I'm, I'm actually like really, feeling great right now like i accomplished something already that, that's awesome yeah, yeah yeah if you can just take that one step and, and accomplish just one thing whatever it is that that makes the morning go better a lot of times i know for me speaking of dishes i don't know if you saw my post where i was complaining about the dishwasher oh yeah i saw that <laughs> and i'm um still still without a dishwasher but but the dishes are all clean because, because I just made it, I just incorporated it into my routine and said, well, I'm going to, I'm going to make the best of this and, and enjoy it. So, so is it that your landlord isn't fixing it or it's, it's, I, I put the, the request in and I wait and they're, they're slow to respond for requests that seem like they're not prioritized or, or whatever. And, oh, sure. uh, and we had, um, you know how dishwashers have the, the control unit the, mm -hmm. with the buttons and everything. They replaced that one time and it's, yeah. So Never anyway. been the same. <laughs> you know, I think they make it so you can't replace those parts. So you have to buy a new one. You that, know? that might be, that might be because true. they don't, they don't talk to each other. The, the electronics, you know, yeah. the way the originals do. Yeah, That's what I think. Yeah, I would. I wanted to share you. It's when you're talking about going, uh, getting your kids off to school and going to bed. I, I, one of the things that came to my mind was when when my daughter was six months old. We decided finally we had we had gone. It was our goal to go six months without having to use daycare or anything like that, or have a babysitter, and 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 we were able to do that. And then it came time to. Uh, think about that for maybe a couple of days a week. And so I was charged with, with taking my kid to the first day of, of daycare. It was like a private in-home daycare. And, and I remember driving there and, you know, six months is, is like the first time, first time she's wearing shoes and she's looking down at her shoes Aww. while flying in the car seat. And I, and I drop her off and, and then I came right back home and I went down to my, my office in the basement and I, I laid down under the table. <laughs> oh. It was almost like I'm, ta I'm taking a nap because of the, the past six months have been crazy. It had been crazy. So, yes. Well, my first daughter, Morgan, was a preemie. So mm. she was due in April and was born February 17th. Oh, wow. That's that's really early. Really early. She was yeah. 30 weeks. Um, she was four pounds, four ounces. Wow teeny tiny little thing and um because she i i had some complications she, they had to stop my labor like three times in january so by the time february came my body was like nope time to do this so yeah yeah um so when i had her i had had some steroids and things like that 
to to stop the the contractions in January. Mm -hmm. So her lungs were developed. So mm -hmm. that was a big plus because uh, she only ended up in the NICU for like two days. Mm -hmm. And then there's a step down called the PICU. And I don't know what the P stands for, but it's a step down. Uh -huh. And she was there for two weeks and then they sent her home with me. Wow. And when I went That's home, amazing. she was just about four pounds. Wow, that, that, that is tiny. Oh my gosh, yeah. her, her face was the size of a tangerine. I mean, wow. it was, Wow. and you look at this little human and you're like, you're sending me home with this. I don't know what to do. You know, you're it's a new mom. And um, she the reason she couldn't go home is she wouldn't feed. Uh -huh. So um, so we had to get up every two hours and like try to get that bottle in. And she had no interest um, because she hadn't developed that far yet. Yeah. Wow. So it, I can relate to what you're saying only because then I had to go. Um, I never had to do daycare. I was so blessed. I'm a private voice teacher, as you know. Mm -hmm. So I just arranged my schedule to do kids mm -hmm. um, and ended up teaching at a couple different studios where I took them with me and I stuck mm -hmm. them in every ballet, acro, dance, music yeah, yeah, theater sure, I yeah. could. So um, when I took her um, to go to her preschool, at three because she was just one of those kids that she needed learning she yeah. was bored to death um, which made her highly creative because i believe that kids need to get bored before that creativity really mm, yeah. kicks in yeah. because you know when what else are you going to do once you're bored you're like okay let's take that string and that box you know um but anyway so when i dropped her off when she was three at her um up again a private lady that i had known for years she turned her garage into this amazing preschool her name was miss ronnie and i sat in the driveway and bawled my <laughs> <laughs> because how do you just drop them off after three years? Yeah, yeah. And Sabelle, Sabelle and I were talking about that because she just barely did that with her with her daughter, Bella Joy, who's two, three right now. So it's oh, just like, it's but she, I mean, she has two older kids, but still it's, it's like the experience of you got to let yeah. go. And Yes. And then my second one, she didn't go until she was four. Um, and she is my pixie and she um, is very experiential. So she, every Reagan has to touch, feel, go for. And so she had a little trouble in the beginning yeah. just because that's how she experienced her world. And of course, when she was home with me, you know, you try to keep it to a minimum, no jumping on the couch. But if you want to see what it's let yeah, them, let them run, them. run rampant as long as there's no, there's no, <laughs> there's no knives or. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I taught Razor school for years, yeah. so you kind of have that. Um, my boss used to say uh, my classroom was controlled chaos. Yes. Um, but in yeah. a good way, you know, because I I'm a music teacher. So. And, what, and what kind of class was it? Elementary? I forget. I um, that thought, particular one was um, middle school. I middle, actually yeah, middle school. <laughs> mm -hmm. I taught piano, group piano, to third graders. Whoa. Oh yeah, don't do that one again. Wow. <laughs> that was tough. That was really tough. Um, only because I had no experience doing it so how do you like you know i one-on-one -on -one, you I move your three finger or you know you can reach over and move but now you're like circling the room trying yes. to move everybody's mm -hmm. fingers i don't yes. know you teach group guitar don't you I, I i've taught group guitar i've i've only done it occasionally with ele elementary and middle school uh kids uh but in, in college it's still sort of this i mean they get a little better it, it's yeah. been mostly college age kids that i've taught group guitar too but it's all about I, I think the especially when you're starting in elementary school it's like instruction here, here's instruction and here's crowd control right <laughs> <laughs> and and so as you go on that they kind of they kind of converge a little bit but it's still you know you get into middle school it's crowd control high school is even crowd control when it's a group it's much easier as you know with with an individual to oh my to do that and i think I'll, actually when we're talking about voice I, have you ever done choir oh my goodness yes yeah yeah Love. so I, I think it's a little different thing maybe a little different thing with choir i don't know it, it is not. because they're all there because they want to be Nobody just is assigned choir. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, when I taught at Roland Hall in uh, Salt Lake City, um, we had an O block, which was kind of like the uh, athletic block. Okay. Um, 7.15 in the morning. So they couldn't find a place to put choir, high school choir. So I got O block. Now, kids who show up at 7.15 in the morning to sing. They're, they're dedicated. Either, you yeah. know? Yeah. So I didn't really experience that so much with what, Was it like a show choir, honor choir, or, or something? Just, or was a, just regular a regular old just choir. Just a regular choir. Yep. Uh, but I did introduce them. And like, you know, you know, you've got to introduce them to everything. Yeah. So um, I, I believe that one of my teaching philosophies is that if you don't kill, tell kids they can't do it, then they yeah. will. Or they'll at least. Yeah, attempt. I love that. I love you that. know, yeah. so you just don't tell them it's hard. You don't tell them that four part harmony is difficult, you know. And so I also had that choir and I had a barbershop quartet with four guys that I talked into having. Oh, that's, that's great. That's great. And that was that was a blast. We had so much fun, so much fun in that because it's just you and four kids. Yeah. And that that school was really wonderful that way, because if you had five kids, I had four because it's barbershop, but generally it was five kids that were interested in a class or a subject, they would run the class. Yeah. yeah so it wasn't, you know, there good. was a curriculum, but then there was, you know, hey, I really want to study this and you five want to do that. Let's find a place in the schedule for that. So it was super flexible and I loved that. I yeah, I, I think kids respond to that as well. If it's something that they're <clears throat> they're interested in, yeah. and it's something that's a little bit of a stretch for them, well, that, that really gets them invested in it. The class, one of the classes I taught was AP Music Theory, mm -hmm. um, and it was five kids and me sitting at a table. So, yeah. you know, how much better are they going to do than you know if I had a class of fifty? Right. You know, because individual. Because I don't know if you know, but a lot of it is ear training. Yeah. And, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, you know, ear training and sight reading can be ominous to a beginner. Yeah. Um, and for some reason, the college I went to did not teach solfege. Um, and so that was something that, I had to teach myself later. Um, and forget the hand movements. I have no idea what that is. But... Um, my daughter, she just took an exam because um, she's in college and she's in her fourth uh, senior year. And she had to do the solfege with the mouth and the hands. And like, she was like, Mom, I don't know what I am doing. <laughs> not uh, I, have, I, have a, I have a great solfege story for you. You do? Oh, I want to hear it. Yeah, I, I have a great. I, and I, uh, for those of you who are watching, uh, Maria and I went, brief, well, I think you went briefly to the same college I went to for yeah. for undergraduate and I don't know if Michael Ballum was there mm -mm. and I don't know if you've heard of him he, he was I've like heard a, the name. yeah he was a big big singer guy you know and he you know very very put to very put together nice. right and anyway he he taught a section of ear training that I was in one time and so for those for those of you who've never studied music we had a, a textbook it was it was called music for sight singing and it was oh, i have that one still yeah, it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. and and so it has all of these musical examples these melodies that that you're supposed to sing and we learned solfege and for for those of you who are not musicians solfege is the do re mi fa so la ti do it's, it's using the syllables for the for the um the notes in the scale right and major that that was the major scale that i did and the minor scale has different syllables and the the syllables are different depending on what kind of a minor scale it is and one of the things we had to do in the class sight singing ear training is we would be in there we would have prepared i, I don't know maybe 10 different melodies that we were we were supposed to be, be prepared, prepared to sing and i didn't prepare <laughs> and yes, huh? <laughs> and I, I was pretty good at I, I didn't bother with the solfege so much, but I was pretty good at doing a law, just just vocalizing on a law and getting the right. I can notes. do a syllable, and, yes. And, and so, so Michael Ballum says, "Okay, well, here's here's number I don't know number twenty six, whatever it was, and it had all these. It was all minor, using melodic minor, and and oh, um, oh, oh. And, and, and I'm I'm like." <laughs> 
can, can I, can I just do it with a law? And I'm saying this in front of the whole class and, and, and Michael Ballum, he's a big, uh, you know, he's, he's a big, you know, like motivational guy. In addition to being a great singer, he's very much, right. He says, well, you know, we made a commitment that we were all going to practice this with the, with the solfege syllables. And let me just ask the class this, how many people in the class <laughs> <laughs> think, think James should, should perform this with the solfege syllables? And of course, everybody raises their hand. And, and I don't know. I don't know how many of them uh, had practiced or whatever. It did, didn't matter, right? But so <laughs> they I put you on the spot. I, I stum Yeah, I, I stumbled through. It was. Uh, oh. oh my goodness, it it was like it was literally like me stripping off my oh, yeah. shirt and my pants and my underwear and st <laughs> standing there naked in front of the entire class. Uh, that is horrible. <laughs> and so that that's a that's a lesson about uh, you know if 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 somebody you know I, I I for a long time I was mad that he did that, oh, to me, sure. but but afterward it's like well, you know of course of course he was going to do that and he would have done that to any other student as well. So <laughs> yeah, it was a little extreme in my opinion, but yeah, yeah that's yeah. crazy. Well, you know. Anyway, any any last words? We're we're at fifteen right now. Oh goodness, which is, that which went so amazing. fast. I know it's 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 <laughs> fabulous to do these because you know we get to talking, we talk on a subject, and we talk on like several subjects like we did this morning, and then all of a sudden, boom! And it's like, well, I have to have to be disciplined to, to cut it off. And usually, when I cut it off, it's about seventeen. And my goal is to to commit to to making exactly fifteen. But anyway, any last words you have for? For today um just that i would say that music for me um and for kids is the place where all like the 7 15 in the morning those kids that showed up there yeah were the kids that fit in nowhere they were wandering in the school trying to figure out where to belong mm -hmm. I remember one time uh, I had a girl, her name was Anami Shepherd, and her brother was Shanti. And they kept trying to get Shanti to choir. Well, he didn't want to come. Well, one day I look over and like three girls are pushing him. He's leaning backwards and they push him into class. And he ended up staying and just finding his world. Oh, that's, and that's so that's, you know, to me, that's what music is. No matter what we talk about, you know, this or that. For me as a teacher, Music is the place where creatives find their place and their yeah, people. Yeah, I love it. Love you it. know, their tribe. Yeah, that's great. And that's what I love providing. So that's what I would say. But it's oh. been so fun to be here with yeah, you. Yeah, this is this has been this has been a good time. So, I, and we're we're doing it again tomorrow. Yes, we are. All right. It's all right. Well, thanks everybody for joining us. We'll say bye. we'll say bye, and we'll See you tomorrow. Stop the stream. Great, that was great, Maria.